In this video, I want to share some general purpose tricks that you can use to achieve better results while working with Cubase. The first idea is if you go to your loop browser and select a loop, it will be shown here in an audio waveform in that tiny window. Now you want to probably know if that loop is going to work in your project or not. And therefore you can find information about, sometimes not in all of them, about the key or the tempo. But still that might be not enough to know if that is the right sound that you need in your song. So there is, of course, a pre-listen function. And it goes really easy. You have play, stop and pause, and you can click a loop and just play it. Also, you have a tiny slider for the volume of your loop, but that wouldn't be all too helpful. You get a general idea now but what if your project tempo is like 120 or 25 or 30 and your loop is only like 94 or 150 and is not the tempo that you want. So therefore here are some things you can activate to make the browsing here in the loop browser a little bit more comfortable. The first button will automatically start playing the loop if you select it. So if you click any, then you can immediately hear how it sounds. And that is probably cool if you're looking for a loop that would fit in your project and you're not sure what to use and you wanna Just use your up and down arrow keys to jump to the next one and shortly pre-listen it. The next two buttons are also really important because one transposes the loop automatically in the correct tempo for your project. So if I listen to it right now, it will sound at 120 beats per minute even though it's originally played at 95 beats per minute. That is really important for a much better overview if that loop would fit into your song. And the last one is also really cool because you will never know exactly if it fits in your tune if you cannot listen to it with the other music in your project. And that works like this. You click this button and then if you start your project, the loop will automatically play along to your project and to your project tempo. So the loop starts when you press play and stops when you press play and it is exactly at the right spot. So right now if I deactivate my grid and jump just anywhere into the bar and start playing, the loop will know where my cursor line is and start at that exact moment so it will always fit to the position where you start your song at. The next idea I want to show is how you can open a virtual instrument. I guess most people use virtual instruments at least at some point in their working process. You can do so if you click on the virtual instrument symbol here. 
or here of course here on your track but there's also two more possibilities which are really helpful i think so if you have a track and you're working on the midi notes right now and you want to apply some changes to your virtual instrument then you can do so without closing this window so you don't have to close that and open it here you can do so right here in that window if you have activated your virtual instrument here in the toolbar and then you will find this button over here and then you can open your instrument right away and go back to working on your MIDI notes and also if you have opened your channel edit window you will find a button for the virtual instrument here but you could also click and hold down the edit button or alt click the edit button both open the virtual instrument as well that is especially helpful i think if you have your mixer open because then it's even worse you can't find this button here right away so you have to open the channel edit then you can open the virtual instrument or you have to close your mixer and then you can open your virtual instrument and therefore i think it's really cool to know if you click and hold down the edit button or you alt click it that will open the virtual instrument and you can keep your mixer open so while I have the mixer open, I want to share some more information. Let's say you have recorded a choir and some brass as well. And you want to work on these channels without having to scroll through your mixer and you also don't want to scroll in your project window then you have the possibility to select these channels and you go here and say only show the channels that i have selected so that by itself is already a nice trick if you want to know more about the visibility agent here in the mix console then check the videos I made about the mix console but there's one more thing that is really cool that I want to show right now and that is you can also synchronize your project window to that view besides the visibility function that you also have here in your inspector so that is the one that I explained already here in the left zone in the mixer you have a few tabs on top and there is also possibilities to show and hide tracks and that you also have over here in your inspector in the left zone of your project window there you could also show and hide tracks of course and you also have your visibility agent here and here the possibility to filter the tracks but what I wanted to show is this you have the possibility to synchronize your mixer and your project window so that means if I click here and say I want to synchronize my first mix console and the filter function for the channels and I select a couple of tracks here in my mix console it will automatically also be applied 
here in my project window and right now you see I have the same number of tracks and of course the same tracks here in my project than I have here in my mixer and if I go back to all the tracks then as well here in my project window I will find all the tracks. That is really good if you want to work on a certain group of tracks because otherwise you will always have to scroll up and down until you can find the right track and you have to edit it. So if you select a group of tracks and you have your project window and the mixer synchronized all the tracks you select will be shown right away. Another cool possibility is the search function. You just click here and you get this overview and you say oh I want to find my MIDI channel number 8 and you click it and your project window will automatically jump there. If you're working on a project and it is with a lot of track and you want to work on this one and get a good overview depending on your timeline but you also want to work on that one and get a good overview on your timeline then it's sometimes difficult if you jump here to compare it to the timeline and to compare it here so therefore you have another function and that is a ruler track you can have even more than one of these and it will show the ruler with bars and beats so if you change one of these to seconds then you can see bars and beats as well as the timeline in seconds in your project and also if you move it anywhere it's easier sometimes to say if I'm working on this track I can watch for bar 8 or 9 up here and if I'm working on this track on this then it's easier to see it down here. Also this would be helpful if you're using the key editor because there you have a tab that is called global tracks and if you activate your ruler track here then again you will have the possibility to work in this window and see at the same time your timeline in seconds and in bars as well. And like you can see, depending on which ruler I click, I have the possibility to use the grid in right now here on that ruler in 4-4 four, four time so it snaps to the downbeats but I also have the possibility on this ruler to use a grid of 100 milliseconds. So in the MIDI editor if you have notes then you probably know the kicker function that Cubase offers. the kicker function also with key shortcuts. What I mean is if you select a note you can move that note with your keys not only up and down but also to the left and right and you also can shorten and lengthen it depending on the grid setting that you have. That also works for more than one note and all of this can be done with key shortcuts which sometimes goes really fast and makes working a lot more easier. So what you can do is you select a note and any selected note you can move to the left or right with your left and right arrow keys while you're holding down the command or control key. 
that moves the node. If you use the left and right arrows without the command key, you will just jump to another node. If you want to move the node, you have to use this modifier. If you want to select more than one, then you can do so if you hold down the shift key. And if you want to lengthen the nodes, then you can do so in the beginning of the node. So right now I'm opening like I would grab it here in the front and drag it to the left. And that you can do with your arrow key to the left and the alt or option key and shorten it in the beginning with the arrow key to the right and the alt or option key. And the same goes for the end of the node. You can lengthen or shorten the end of the node with your left and right arrow keys while you hold down alt or option plus shift. So that will make the nodes longer or shorter. If you use the command key, you can move them in time. Another helpful tip here in the key editor is if you click a node, you will hear that one node. But if you command click a node, you will hear all the nodes that are at the same time available at that place. So if I click that node, I will hear all these nodes up to this one. And I can hear the complete chord at that moment in time. That is, I think, really cool if you want to get an overview of what's happening right now at this position and you don't want to scroll up and down because you have a lot of nodes or you don't want to figure out which chord just now happens and go through all the nodes, then you can just command click one of these. Or what is also really helpful, if you select all of these, then you can see here on the left, on the keyboard, which notes are being played right now. And if you're good at playing the keyboard, or at least you know the notes and a little theory, then you can figure out the chord as well. So while I'm talking about lengthening, there is also one thing that is important here for very audio. Sometimes Cubase thinks there are two notes, but there are not, and then the very audio segments get divided, or like this here, it is just not long enough. Sometimes this is good because there is a sound here in the beginning, which is not part of the note. So for example, if the singer would sing something here in the beginning, there would be maybe a sound of taking a deep breath. And then sometimes you don't want to work on that sound as well. So then it's cool. But on the other hand, sometimes the segment is just not long enough. And then if you work on that note, you would get problems because just a part of the note is being compressed and the other one that is not in your segment will be stretched and you don't want that. Right now I want to compress my whole note and not the front part is being compressed and the back is being stretched. That is not what I want. So what I have to do then is I have to lengthen my segment and I cannot do this by dragging it because dragging just time stretches my note. I have to hold down the alt or option key at first and then I drag my segment for as long as I want the segment to be 
and then afterwards I can use this segment for my whole note. And the same is the case over here. So you see, if I want to work on that note, the front part of the note is not being changed the way I like it because it's not integrated in my segment. So therefore I again go to the front and hold down my Alt or Option key for as long as I want my note to be. And then afterwards I can work on this whole segment with my time stretch function. And the last tip I want to share is if you're having a track and there is events on it, different events, and there are pauses in between, then sometimes it happens that you want to work on that one and you open it and then you can work on this event, but then you want to go to the next one. So you have to close that and open that and you work on this and then we want to go back to the first one or to the next and you have to close that one and open the next one and so on. And that is not practical. So there's a few different things you can do to prevent that. The first one would be you just use the context editor. And that means that you can open like a tiny key editor that is shown here in the project window. There you can do basic things like changing your CC data. So the volume and move around nodes or stuff like that. That is for simple things you want to apply really helpful. The other possibility that works only for MIDI or instrument tracks is you just select all the events at once and open these and then they will be shown in one key editor window. So now you can see your events and in between the pauses. And one event will be active. That is the one with the bright colors and the other with the grayed out colors are inactive. Then you can work here. And if you want to work on another event, you just click and then this one becomes active and the first one is inactive. Then you can work here on your MIDI notes and you can go to another event and again here work on your notes and so on and so on. And you have all these four events available even though there is pauses in between. So I hope you found these tips helpful. I will show some more Cubase short tips in the coming videos. So check out these as well.